enjoyed every bit of it. It is a, it, it's a great board. They're, they're back in the office. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Flip. Uh, when Flip left is when uh, Tony came up. When the economy got bad, Flip went to Mobile. Is he back? Oops. Well, <laughs> worked up real tight in 06, 08, 09, and he had to go over to Mobile and make a living. And now he served, he served on here a long time. He's a good guy. Yeah. He's a good board cool. member, good guy. Yeah, I really hate him. We, we've had three 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 some outstanding board members. I mean, I told you about I really so tearing it down. Yeah, yeah, everybody I've seen it. with has been outstanding. I've been, I used to go to Jim's morning to have his work prepared. Yeah. Art Miller, Art Miller is probably one of the most controversial people in the county, but he was a good board member. And it's a pleasure to serve him. But we're going to try to make it sound too bad. So he sure likes that paper about Tony. He's trying to keep the locked walls. Letter to the editor. It was all out of lock. And I drove the pipe to the bridge. It cracked it up. What are you doing? Department of you know, block by itself. Good deal. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
please help us here tonight to guide our thoughts in uh, doing what's best for our residents in our county and these decisions we're about to make. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome our two new board members. We really do appreciate y'all willing to serve on this board. Mr. Jack Huggins Jr. is replacing Phil Anderson. He is at large. He serves all five county commissioners. We have Mr. David Henderson. Mr. David Henderson is replacing Mr. Phil Fletcher. He's in District 1 serving been appointed by Mr. Bill Chapman. We do appreciate y'all being here and look forward to y'all's contribution. The only problem that I have, we have two architects now, and you know how controversial they get. So <laughs> we may have to split them <laughs> up. I don't know. <laughs> so we, huh? We yeah, we, we need to do that, don't we? But we appreciate it. Thank y'all very much. Well, Bill Fletcher was the longest serving board member well right up um, as long as he was next he served the board very well in the years that he did he was a great board member and phil anderson served his term and we appreciate his service he did extremely well we'd like to thank karen for the hard work she does on our secretary throughout the months we appreciate it miss hayward dice thank you for what you do for the board and the other departments heads that is here. We do not have the legal counsel for the county. She don't fit, huh? Yes, she's absent tonight. She's not with us, so let's, we don't need her anyway, do we? We're on our own tonight. Oh, okay, well, we will, we will hire out ours to you if, if you need some legal advice. Thank How about you, that? First item on the, oh, wait a minute. Mr. Nice. do you have any news? No, no new updates. I will uh, inform the board that we did receive an appeal on the matter that uh, that those, are, I believe you were absent, Mr. Johnson, but uh, the one that we had at the TDC, the Red Bar Magnificent, uh, Jeff, you may recall it. The uh, trees? Yes, sir. That one. That, 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 uh, that order's been appealed. So, uh, but we have not received any new decisions or uh, on, the, uh, on the pending appeals that, that are How many do we have now? I would say probably six to seven that are outstanding. Three of those are new. Four of them are probably have been sitting in the queue for at least a year and a half, year, year and a half. Well, maybe the judge will get around making a decision. We hope so. That's the hope. Yes, sir. November meeting is what day in November? <coughs> the 19th. The 19th. That's on a Wednesday, Tuesday, or Monday? November 19th. We have, uh, it's the fourth month, fourth Thursday of each month, except November and December. So November will be on a Monday, November the 19th. Yes, sir, and we had planned to have this room available for that meeting. However, our relocation to uh, the Freeport Commons building in Freeport uh, has been moved up a week, and they expect this room to be under construction on that day. Uh, so I would... Uh, respectfully ask that we move the meeting to the Defuniac uh, courtroom. Well, sure. We would like to have that. That's permanent, right? Uh, I'd like to request it for this specific meeting. Uh, it's up to the board where y'all meet. <laughs> now, we will have new uh, meeting facilities in the Freeport office uh, that we can utilize also, but that won't be available to us until uh, December 14th. Motion to have the November meeting in the Walton County Courthouse in the Buniac. Motion to have the November 19th meeting in the Walton County Courthouse in the Buniac. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Thank Jeff, you. Jeff, that'll get you home a little quicker, yeah. won't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. At this time, we ask that each and every person here tonight that plan to speak before this board either on any issue if you would, please stand, raise your right hand, and swear that the testimony you give is the truth to the best of your knowledge. Do you all swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Thank you. 
First item on the agenda is the Perry variance. Variance, uh, Bonnie Perry. Hang on a minute. Yes, sir, we have a request to continue this item to November 19th. How many are we going to continue? Uh, we're, going to continue we're going to continue two of the published items and table one of those. And I have one more item for you to consider uh, for purposes of protecting the applicant's advertising. Uh, the first item, number one, we're requesting that to be continued to November 19th um, at the Dupiniac Springs Courthouse at 5 p.m. Are there any others, or you want to do one at a time, or you want uh, to group them together? We can. Let's group them. Okay. Number eight, uh, our attorney has, our county attorney has asked us to continue that item, uh, the final order amendment to the same meeting November 19th in the Dupiniac Springs Courthouse at 4, 5 p.m. Are that the only two? Those are the two. Um, and then if we could deal, we're gonna ask for number seven to be tabled. If they choose to bring it back, it can be re-advertised. But not continue. Not continue. Those are the two continuances of okay, the- Okay, let's deal with those two. Motion <coughs> to continue Perry Barrett's <coughs> item number one and yeah. number eight. Yes, sir. Number one and number eight. Yes, sir. Sir, I apologize. Uh, I came from the town, but and about the number one uh, thing, I am. Uh, this is the second thing to be that's only a believe that's been burned. I came down here for it. I don't, uh, don't know why we're being continued. I mean, is it. Mr. Carpenter, why is it being continued? If this is the second time, why is it? It's at the request of the applicant. I'm not sure why they're asking. The, the emails. Is right the there. applicant here? Oh, wait a second. You're on the hand here. They are, we are requiring them to produce a survey to dimension what they, what the setback actually is from constructive structures and to dimension what they're actually asking for. We don't have a survey on this one and they have not gotten a survey yet. So that's the reason for the request to continue. Sir, come up and state your name for the record so we can get you, if you would, please. My name is Daniel Tompkins. Uh, I am the uh, next door neighbor. We, uh, we deeply regret that we're having to postpone this again. We understand the hardship this has caused you, I guess, twice now. But however, before they come before us, we have asked, this board has asked many times that they have the adequate information to provide us so we can have the right information to make a decision. Yes, sir. Without that survey, we can, we, if, if, they were, if they came here tonight to hear it and they didn't have that survey, we would not hear it. Because we can't really hear a variance without knowing exactly what they're asking for. Yes, sir. It wouldn't be just as to you, the neighbors, or anyone right. else. We, we provided a survey of our property which showed an encroachment, so. Are you for it or against it? I'm against it. Can I, may I ask a question? I really don't want to get into okay. the discussion nope. that okay. until we start discussing it. I mean, we're just trying to get him to, you know, to understand that we continued it, and we don't really need to get into Right, Mr. Hayward? Yeah, I mean, the board has discretion. Uh, also, I don't, I don't know what uh, Mr. Tompkins' uh, view is, but I mean, the board can obviously, can, if, if the intent of the board is to continue it, you can, you can advise the applicant this will be the last continuance, that it will be heard one way or the other at the November meeting. That way we can bring it to some finality. But uh, I agree, you probably shouldn't get into the facts on whether or not he's for or against it at this point. Go ahead. Well, I, I don't know that I need a survey to know that this thing is sitting on the property line and doesn't look very attractive in the setback. Well, I do. And I think if we make it a survey, if we make a decision without a survey, I just don't think Can I make one that's comment? the way we need to Can I make one comment on that? Is, that is, I believe that a, a certified survey of our property showing encroachment was provided to staff. So other than that, I'm done. I'm through. Yes, we have a motion to continue. We will, we would like to. Mr. 
Mr. Carpenter, I think we're going to address this and on the. Let's just go ahead and address this on the individual basis. We'll continue this with the with the understanding that the applicant is like Mr. Hayward Dyke said, our attorney advised us this would be the last continuance, you know, that they would get. I understand. And one of our concerns about this is the fact that it does possibly encroach on the neighbor's lot, the building that they're asking the variance uh, to be approved for to allow to remain may actually encroach on the neighbor's lot and it may be this gentleman's property. Well, um, we definitely need a survey. And we definitely need them to be here. and We definitely need to be the last time. Because the applicant. Now, there's a, if, there, if it's an encroachment, get, then it gets into a code enforcement. Is that correct? You is can't a get a variance to allow something to exist on someone else's property. Is the code enforcement been there? Not yet. I think they need to be advised to be there. Because this, this, this is um, a result of code enforcement that they uh, referred um, the applicant to us <coughs> to request, um, they gave them the option to apply for a variance and um, therefore <coughs> they came and they made an application. Mr. So this is a result of a code enforcement case. Mr. Dice. If they fail to show up at the next time, code enforcement needs to take their uh, steps in finding those individuals for the encroachment or how are we going to enforce that if it is such a situation? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the status of the code enforcement case is, if any. I mean, do they have an open case? It's pending. I'm not sure results. that a notice of violation has been issued in an effort to work it out. At code enforcement, they directed them to plan to apply for a variance. Once we got the application, it's inconsistent with what we believe to be is an encroachment. And that's when we requested them to get the survey to prove that what they're asking for can actually be granted. Right. Um, but we believe the encroachment to actually exist on the neighbor's property. Yeah, I, and as Mac pointed out earlier, I mean, you know, this board is somewhat limited. You can't you know, authorize an encroachment onto somebody else's property. So, you know, if they get that survey, there may not even be a variance to consider. But if they don't get the survey, then we ask that code enforcement starts, you know, their process. Yeah, yeah they'll of, do what they need to do. I'll find it and not let this thing continue. Look it up. Take Motion care. to continue November the 19th in the PNA. This is just for the Perry variance? Perry variance. Motion to continue. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Nay. Nay. Why? <laughs> if you don't mind asking, if you don't mind me asking. It's a five foot setback and there's a big shed built in a permanent shed. It's not a temporary shed, it's a permanent shed with concrete tile roof and the whole nine yards. I, I, again, I would recommend, let's not get into the facts of the case in case. I'm just asking is the I understand. I mean, I, I'm just trying to, under, I'm not, look, I'm just, I'm not putting nobody on the spot, nothing like that. I just want to, if I miss something, that's all. Yeah, I, I don't need a survey. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to item number eight. We're going to take a uh, motion to um, continue that one to November 19th also. Yes, sir. Motion. Motion to continue number eight. Second. Do we have a Second. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Number three, talk about variance. Uh, do you want to take number seven tabling? Pardon me? Number seven, we're going to ask to table that one. Oh, yes. Let's go to number seven. Uh, and that's the Jonathan Vandershoer variance. Uh, we have a, we've identified the applicant's deficiency in public notice, the mail public notices. Um, that's been brought to the attention of the applicant. Um, we suggested tabling, they agreed with that. Um, if they choose to pursue the variance, it can be re-advertised and re-addended in the future. But right now we're asking that number seven to be tabled. Motion to table number seven that Jonathan Vander Second. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Huckabee Bears. Who's here to represent uh, William J. Huckabee? Mickey Whitaker. Whitaker. Mickey, come up, please. 
You have five minutes. Uh, I only need three. I only need three. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mickey Whitaker, and I'm here. Mr. Huckabee couldn't be here. He couldn't get a traveling schedule to get down here. Uh, and he's asking for a variance on the, the Gulf Trace. Gulf Trace has a neighborhood plan, which is part of the land development code. They have different parking requirements in the Walden County Land Development Code in, in, in the sense that they require over 2,500 square feet. Once you get 2,500 square feet, you're required to have a uh, parking space, an additional parking space. Up to 2,500 square feet or four parking space. Every 500 square feet after that is one per 500 square feet. And uh, I don't know if y'all recall, Dr. Huckabee, had we've gotten a variance here last year uh, for where, uh, because of and he put in a treatment room downstairs, which is not living area. But irregardless, uh, the house comes out where the, the neighborhood plan would call for eight parking spaces, and we're requesting a variant to get six parking spaces. We do have a support letter from the neighborhood HOA for this. Um, the, if it was just a Walton County code, it would require probably four spaces. But so but the neighborhood plan, we're, we're going to six and, and based on their square footage things, but he's got building a four bedroom house uh, there. And, uh, and the big problem with it, and here's where the variance comes in, is that the lot is in the coastal Boone Lake zone, so he can only have 40% of the lot covered with you know, non-pervious area. So the additional parking spaces would put him, you know, where he couldn't have his, um, Pool for the, which was required for the treatment center. So, Jim, so refresh my memory a little bit. Was that a hardship? Is the reason he wanted a variance for the treatment? Was yeah. it his? Was it his wife? His wife. Mother? His wife. His wife was in a wheelchair. Yeah. Is that correct? Right. And so and so I mean, we didn't address that parking at the time. I thought no, we did. No, not that I, we did it. Not that I recall, because uh, it just came up when they got in there and started figuring in the stormwater, the non-pervious area, and that's when the, the parking issue came up. Okay, now what are you asking for? Uh, a reduction in the parking spaces from eight to six, based on the neighborhood plan. And the county code would be what? County code would be four parking spaces, I think. Two spaces for three, and wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't be four parking spaces for ten. Mm. For four Do you have any bedrooms? Four. Four bedrooms. Three. 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 Three parking spaces with the county. If it was just the county code, it would be three parking spaces. Help me out again, and who's requesting a greater amount? Pardon? Why? Who is requesting a greater amount? Why? The, the Gulf Trace neighborhood plan requires more. They were based on their neighborhood plan because it's based on a square footage thing. They would require eight parking spaces. Is that due to the fact that when they rent out rooms or they want to make sure there's plenty of parking? I mean, I'm assuming that's why they put that in the neighborhood plan. They did not want to you know, you know, these big rental houses to come in there and only have three parking spaces or whatever, and they'd have you know eight cars there. For is, an eight bedroom house. Is this house going to be used as a rental? No, it's a permanent residence. And it's not built yet? No, no. That's why we're here, is it's not built yet. Any and questions? Maybe. And y'all do have the letter from the neighborhood saying that. Do you have plans for the, the house available? Well, I mean, I've got these right here. Yeah, I would love to see those. Is that the only copy you have? Yeah. Didn't you submit those when you came before? Yeah, we had the house plans before. And what got a we can pass those around. Mr. Dykes, are we going to enter those into evidence? If so, we need to get copies made, right? Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be allowed to keep those, Mr. Whitaker. 
we keep that? So we'll make that applicant uh, one. I'm assuming there's a correct, mm -hmm. I'm assuming there's a correct floor plan or something, but I don't know if they made any changes to the room sizes or anything, but that's the layout of the house. Mm -hmm. okay. Y'all want to look at these? Yeah, they can hand them around. Wait, yeah, we need to make sure. Get Vicky, why are there two kitchens in the house? You know? No, I mean, what on one on the second floor and one on the third floor? Yeah. I mean, uh, and uh, I guess he just fixed it that way for when he does have gas, they'll have a kitchen there. I mean, the, the ground floor looks like it's set up to be two bedrooms with a Jack and Jill bath in between. Yeah. And then that's the wrong plan, then. Okay. Well, I mean, two kitchens would seem like a, a rental situation. Well, I can tell you it's not going to be a rental. I mean, I must print off the wrong plans there. You know, is all I can say because we y'all should have on record the plans that, that he's going to be building okay. for the treatment center. I think we I think we got to have those plans. I mean, there, you're in the planning process, so you had to submit something to the planning department. Well, well the, the county. I mean, they submitted something to the county, the builder. Yeah, I wish I see. I just printed and printed those off today, real quick, off my computer. So, yeah. and so. Uh, Continuously on the various, but I mean we let's let's just assume that it's being granted with bonds that's not a rental. Yeah, that could I mean, be part of the various if he's yeah. willing to do because that. Because yeah. factual, you know, what we're doing here is the parking. I mean, like I say, uh, you know, I wish I could run back to my office and get you, right. or else get the. Y'all have plans in the building? Uh, not the plans. We only have plans. plans. So. Anything else? But I can, you know, I can sit here and I'm on their oath. It's never going to be a rental. It's a four bedroom house, and that's all it's ever going to be. You know, I have no problem that being part of the, the variance approval, then, right? If that's the concern of the board. No. Okay. So I'm looking at the, the site plan says for the six parking spaces that you have an impervious service surface ratio of 31.5%. So two more parking spaces would certainly be less than 750 square feet. And so you, I don't yeah, see how you're over the allowable. With the eight. I'm just going by what they, the, the county building department said, I don't know. Mean. Well, let's listen from the let's listen to the county. Let's see what the county has to say. We we'll give you a chance to come back, Mickey. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, well, actually, th this property is um, also encumbered by the Coastal Dean Lake um, standards. So uh, they they have the. Um, Gulf Trace Neighborhood Plan, um, which is more restrictive, plus the Coastal Dean Lakes to contend with as far as to how much improvement they can do on the property. So that is another consideration of that. So you're allowed, to, you're allowed to develop 40% of the lot and, and disturb 50% yeah, of it. But when I, w one thing is you got to have the storm water too. See, that's where the a lot of it comes in. You got to have room for your storm water. If if they would do the, you know, if that's you, my understanding. Can you do a, an exfiltration system under the? I driveway think they're pit? doing one. I believe. I mean, I wish that the builder was here. But yeah, I mean, you've got more than enough room to I put exfiltration already. under the driveway. But the site plan says 31.5 percent. Two more spaces is 500 square feet. Why well, so you're, I, you're I, under 40 percent? Yeah, okay. Well, let me ask you this then. Can you issue a variance stating that building that, well, I mean, he, he, I don't think he would care if it's eight parking spaces as long as he could fit everything on there. Let me put it that way. If he can get his pool, his stormwater, and his parking on there, I mean, you know, 
that, that's not an issue, but he was, his, when his builder submitted the plans to Walton County, they came back and, you know, they, they said, you know, there was a problem with it and sent it to uh, Mark McCain, McCain, who's the builder, and then they worked up some different numbers. And so this is what I was presented to. You know. Let me ask you this, Nikki. Is there a possibility you could get your builder and your owner, whatever, come to next month's meeting? And yeah, but that, that's really, I mean, this thing has just been delayed so long. I mean, I mean, I don't mind doing it. He's going to scream at me. Well, now, I'm going to uh, explain to you yeah. something. Yeah. Now, you know, yeah, uh, we want to give you a fair opportunity right. to, to get this and thing I approved. I appreciate now, that. Now, wait a minute, Nick. So Jeff is bringing up some good points here. And there's a good possibility we'll hear it if you want to hear it. But if his, if the points Jeff is bringing up is correct, then you know right. it, it doesn't seem logical well, no, to I'm, to make the to allow the variance. Well, no, because I'd rather have somebody that can talk the same language to Jeff rather than me. Well, now you got a it. choice. You can either continue it. We'll hear Let's it. Don't matter it. to me. Let's continue it. The, it. the review would have gone to planning, but he's talking about not building to verify the. Um, the amount of park, uh, parking spaces yeah, that right. there need to be. It was, um, so. I mean. Uh, the what now? Um, when, when Mickey is saying that it went to building, it, it actually, it went to planning, it came through planning, and that's where it was stopped for the number of parking Okay, spaces. then explain, explain, explain Jeff's question. Oh, okay. What? Well, I understand that they submitted six parking spaces and you told them they needed eight. Looking at this, that have room to add two more spaces and be under the allowable developed area. Okay. And I think that, that could just be the instead of getting a variance, that they would be better off putting in the two spaces for getting a permit and putting the exfiltration under the driveway and moving on. Well, I mean, and let her answer. She said that she said planning created this problem. Let her answer why. Well, uh, what I'm thinking is maybe that. Uh, the, we just quoted the Walton County parking standards would only require three spaces. It may be that they um, put more in. Well, I thought we did not make variances of, of, of uh, planned neighborhood that we just dealt with the county. I, I, didn't, I didn't think we had the authority to change. You, you don't. And I think in this situation, and Matt can speak to it, the Gulf Trace neighborhood plan, that was actually adopted as part of the county's code, correct? Yes. It is a component yeah. of the land development code and has the same effect of every other section in the land development. Right. So, so what therefore we have jurisdiction right. to grant the variance. So generally speaking, if you had a planned community that had their own <coughs> covenants and conditions, you would not have the authority to change or amend those. However, for the Gulf Trace neighborhood plan, it was adopted at some point into the land development right. code. Well, I mean, therefore okay. you have the ability okay, to. Okay, now Vivian, this is not making sense. It's not making sense that you want you you kind of insinuating that you're you're hanging your hat on it's the Walton County uh, requirements, and Jeff is has a, a, a real good point here according to this. Well, now, maybe I'm just not understanding. So Jeff, exactly. I think so. they submitted six parking spaces. Planning said no, you you're required to have eight, and so they said, well, we need a variance to get six but all they really need to do is show two more cars on the site plan and they'll still be under the 40% impervious surface ratio. So there's no, <coughs> no hardship. And but I can could, they get eight on there? Absolutely. Okay, well for some reason, and I was only part of the one short conversation on this, the engineer that was working on that, for some reason he couldn't get it figured out. Like, the engineer with the county or No, with, with, with the working on this site plan. Okay, then we're about to continue this in November, so you get your engineer, your builder, your homeowner, whoever can explain mm -hmm. this. That's, I guess so, yeah. All right, we appreciate I, it. I don't want to try to explain it. I don't think there's a hardship. I think you all can figure well, this out. Because at, at some point, this, ha this well, is I mean, a seven-bedroom house. Well, of course, it'd be, you know, I mean, for me, you know, I mean, like parking, you know, non-pervious parking, I mean, you know, I'm, I don't think all parking should be considered pervious. I mean, you can make a non-pervious area, and I would think you could still park on it, but that's not the way the county sees it, it's my understanding. If it's a parking space, it's non-pervious, no matter what. 
We're not going to sell yeah. this tonight. We need to move along. We'll okay. see you November 19th. Motion to uh, continue November 19th. All right. Can I get the house cleaners back? Motion. Yeah. Uh, motion to continue it to the November 19th. They're in, they're in evidence. Yeah. 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 Second. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 <coughs> that was, uh, who made the, uh, we were talking before, I'm sorry. I made the motion, Jeff, second. Jeff made the second. Thank you. I believe we are on item number three. Yeah. Kristen Hodges of Randy Wise Homes, is that right? Um, Stephen Tatum here on behalf of the uh, applicant from Matthews and Jones. Um, got a package for you guys just to kind of explain maybe what's going on here. That would be our exhibit one. Composite exhibit one. Uh, probably in your packets you have a staff report that says, um, I believe it hasn't been altered, that says this is a variance asking or requesting two different setbacks. One that's, I believe, I half foot or something because of a wall and a patio. That wall and patio has been removed. So the variance request is only for the two feet that the chimney of the house juts into the setback area. <coughs> uh, did you have a question already? Y'all removed the patio and the wall? Yep. Yep, they did. I thought that was the best course of action. So that's where we're at. But um, I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with this, but um, it was continued from September. Um, building permits for Mr. and Ms. Morris's house were um, applied for or issued back in December of 17. Um, in April of 18, Randy Wise Homes got a foundation survey done. Um, they do that on all of them, all of their houses, just to make sure that they don't run into this kind of problem where there's a setback issue. <coughs> um, I believe that's the survey in the very back of the packet. It's either the last one or next to last page of the packet. Um, it'll be the next to last, or the very last page of the packet is the April 6, 2018 foundation survey. And if you look at it, you can clearly see there's a two foot jut out for the chimney and there's also a 0.65 foot wide concrete block wall that's basically right on the property line. That's the wall that's been removed and the patio that was attached to that wall has been removed. The chimney obviously is not something that can just be removed. Um, so, you know, the house has already been constructed. This was not, um, this issue was not uh, discovered until con the contractor went to apply for or request his certificate of occupancy. And he submitted his as-built plans and that's <coughs> when they said, well, you're in the setback. We can't give you a CO, you're going to have to request a variance. Um, stepping back to April in that foundation survey, somehow, the foundation survey was submitted to the city of Freeport and not to Walton County. The development's very close to Freeport and the employee felt that the house was in the city of Freeport. Uh, Latilda had hired a new, new employee at the time and <laughs> she did not realize that the house was not in the city limits either and she reviewed it for city of Freeport standards, stamped off on it. Um, eventually it, the issue was discovered and it was sent on down to the county, but at that point it was just stamped and filed and there was nobody really looked at it. So we didn't know there was an issue until the beginning of August. Uh, once they found out there was an issue, they immediately went and applied for the variance, uh, had their pre-app on August 30th. Uh, from that point, you know, they came to the September meeting and there was only four of you guys here that day, so they didn't want to risk their chances of <coughs> going forward at that point. So that's why we're here tonight. So since that time, since the beginning of August until now, the uh, construction loan is you know, earning interest and they're paying interest on it. Who's and you? they're about to lose their rate lock. Who's your surveyor? Uh, who is our surveyor? Is he here? No, sir, he is not here. Is it Balker? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's Panhandle, Panhandle Associates. Do what now? Panhandle <laughs> Associates. <coughs> Did you have a question about the survey? There's a reason why the house is located where it's at. And um, it yeah, why, why did it, why did, why did this, how did this happen? Was it a, was it a survey It was problem? just a, it, no, it was just complete oversight on several people's part. But the reason the house is where it's at, we still would have asked for a variance had it been back in 
December of last year, before the housing been started. There is jurisdictional wetlands on this lot. If you look at after the letters, there's a, there's a letter in there from First Florida Bank. If you look right after it, there's a blow up of the plat. It looks like this, the plat for the subdivision. And I've outlined in orange where the jurisdictional wetland is. And if you look at lot number 73, you can see that it, it bumps in a very good distance into the lot. So they pushed the house forward and over in order to avoid that impacting that wetland. And as a result, the chimney ended up in the setback. Now, back in December, we still would have been before you guys asking for a variance in order to do that. Uh, Are you saying you went ahead and done it without asking? No, sir. Nobody realized that it happened until August, that it was even an issue. Like I said, we do the foundation surveys in order to try to avoid this sort of thing happening. When did you do the set down? Go ahead. I'm under the impression that equipment is allowed in the side setbacks and that this is a, an HVAC piece of equipment. <coughs> it's a chimney. So chimneys are, are expressly prohibited from being in the it's side setback. It's a piece of equipment. It's part of the house. I might point out that it is a... Um, you know, your roof overhang is 18 inches, so really the chimney's only sticking out, or I'm sorry, 16 inches. So the chimney's only sticking out another eight inches or so beyond the roof overhang into the setback. But, but I know that's- you know, Isn't the whole here. house in the- No, sir, it's only a two foot part, two foot into the setback and 68 inches wide. That's the only part that's affecting the setback. that makes sense maybe about the house. We did have a um, individual who was concerned about the, the wall, the neighbor in Lone Lot 72 was concerned about the block wall being there. That's the reason it was removed. Um, so there is no other neighborhood <coughs> issues. There's no, nobody crying about you know, the chimney being in the setback. Uh, there's actually a letter in your packet there from several of the homeowners expressing support for Mr. Morris and the builder. And um, you got two hardships. You got a wetland hardship, and you got a house that was constructed in a place that shouldn't have been constructed. That is correct. That's your two. Those are our hardships. Any yes. questions? Jack, you quiet tonight. David, y'all got to say something. No. We'll give you a chance to come back. Anyone else here that, that would like to say anything in regards to this? Vivian. What's your position? <coughs> uh, staff does not have any objections to um, <coughs> if you grant the variance for the chimney, two foot, one inch, and um, sometimes mistakes are made and, and if they express their hardship to you, then staff has no objections. So it's a definitely hardship. We put that, put your name on it, right? <laughs> Thank you, Vivian. You want to add anything else? Uh, Just, um, I did want to make sure that the uh, site plan and staff report were moved into evidence or into the record. Sure. But aside from that, no. Any questions? Anybody has any questions? Jeff, anything else you want to <coughs> add? Everybody clear? Mr. Burgess? Clear. Motion close it for the discussion. One, two, one. Is there a one or two? Motion to close it for the discussion. <laughs> Motion to close public discussion. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Motion. I make a motion to approve the of variance as <coughs> presented. But it just will include the chimney only, right, Charlie? Is that what you're getting to? Well, it's not get to that. Just the chimney. Yes, it's strictly the chimney. Chimney by its dimensions of two feet in being in, into the setback and the 68 inches in length. Is that clear enough, Mr. Dox? It is for me. We'll wait for uh, if it passes, Mr. Fletcher. Do you want to attach the uh, survey yes. as part of the order? Yeah. Would that be part of what you'd like to do? Yes. We have a motion as presented. Second. 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 Discussion? Well, I, 
think it's a significant effort to have removed the patio. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, I think that shows a willingness and compromise on their part. Okay. Any other discussion? I think all chimneys should be allowed in the setbacks. <laughs> Never know which way you go. I fly as you fly go. Help me, Doctor. Help me. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second. Aye. All in favor. Nay. You got your bearings. Without Mr. Matthews. <laughs> Item number four. Do we? Mr. Dykes. Yes, sir. Plain of exhibit A? Yeah, she's got a copy. We, we call that copy. Thank you. John Servin. Uh, Good evening. My name is Josh Servin, and I represent the uh, Tourist Development Council. Oh, we're going to enjoy this one. <laughs> I, I hope so. I was just talking with the engineer. I think we're going to reclassify our bathhouse as a chimney. So. <laughs> Motion to deny. <laughs> as you may or may not be aware, the county purchased two parcels in Miramar Beach across from the Amalfi Coast Resort in 2017 with the intent of developing it into a regional beach access. So in front of you here, I have some visual aids that kind of show the existing conditions from overhead. Um, the house there with the um, terracotta colored roof is actually on one of the parcels the county purchased. That is where we are proposing to construct a bathroom. Uh, we are here today to simply request some relief from the front setback for that bathroom structure. It's our understanding in the uh, chapter five of the land development code that we are held to a 25 foot setback uh, as a primary or other primary structure I think is, is how it's classified in that, that chapter 5 definition. Um, so basically what we're asking for there is a 20, a little over 20 foot variance for the bathroom facility. One thing to note with that, the existing structure as it is constructed right now is a little less than a foot and a half off of that right of way line. <coughs> Additionally, the uh, development to the west of that is three single-family residential structures. They are sitting at about 1.8 to 2 feet off of the right-of-way line as well. So our structure, uh, as it is proposed, would be more or less in line with what is already constructed uh, there on site and at the adjacent structures or parcels um, to that development. The second variance that we're requesting is for the interior planting area. Essentially what we're asking for is relief from the interior landscape island that is required after 10 continuous parking spaces. Understanding that we have a lot of constraints uh, with this particular parcel, uh, specifically with the depth of the parcel and the coastal construction line that FD FDEP has established. We feel like we would lose a couple of parking spaces <laughs> and there, therefore the, the, the public would ultimately suffer from that. So we're simply trying to maximize the amount of parking that we can at the same time respecting the land development code. We have actually added some additional uh, landscaping area uh, in consideration for that to try to be equitable. As you can see there on the far east end, we have a pretty large landscape area our total landscaping represents about 24% of the total parking surface area. So we feel like that is uh, far in um, uh, excess of, of what the land development uh, code requires. So those are our two requests for you guys to consider uh, this evening. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to, to answer those. You're going to tear the house down? We are going to deconstruct the house, yes, sir. You're going to tear the house down? Tear the house you're down. You're going to build a bathroom? That's exactly right. Which house? The one with the, the one with the terracotta floor. roof. Yes, the, th the the three story. You can't convert it to a bathroom. No, we we feel <laughs> like the existing structure that supports that particular uh, building is not really what it needs to be. Uh, it was a home that appears to be you know constructed and remodeled several times throughout the year. So we just feel at this point that it would be in the public's best interest to go ahead and deconstruct that and build a new structure. Uh, that is safe and meets current codes. 
And all y'all going to get on that as 19 parking spaces, is that right? Uh, unfortunately, we've got uh, 16 parking spaces uh, there along the southern end. Then we have some golf cart parking on the northern end. We have a little loading and unloading area as well. And this is down where? This is uh, directly across from a Moffee Coast Resort. Uh, this is between Geronimo and Alamo Street there on Cine Gulf Drive. Mr. Burns, did you understand what he wanted? I certainly did, yeah. Well, how far is the bathroom pavilion from the adjacent <coughs> residential structure on the west side? On the west side. I believe it's, uh, let me look at the site plan real quick. It says 15 and a half. That's correct, yes, sir. And then that's it the side of the property line. That, that yeah, that's from the property the line. line. That's, that is correct. So you have another roughly by scale maybe three or four feet in addition, so the separation looks to be about 18 feet, maybe a little more. Is there a wall that, that separates the, the walkway around that building to give privacy to the adjacent structure? The, there is, yes sir. There's a little corridor through there. And is that wall allowed to be, I guess that's not in, that's not in the setback, is it? Correct, it's, it's not on, on our property. Uh, so Any other questions? Yes, I wanted to clarify. Is the setback, is the front setback 20 or 25 feet? You had stated 25. It, it, it's the, our understanding that it's 25 feet. And um, the, the reason we, we believe that is our bathroom structure isn't really considered a uh, single family residential structure, nor is it considered a multifamily structure. And so in section five, it says all other primary structures, commercials, excuse me, commercial churches, et cetera, 25 feet because front with side and rear setback lines conforming to the above mentioned multifamily residential requirements. Okay, that clarifies it, just deemed commercial. Yes, How many square feet you gonna have in your bathroom? It's about 800. 800 square feet. The, the, the roof line is, yes sir. Same pavilions y'all build everywhere else? Exactly, this is gonna be modeled after the Santa Clara Regional Beach Access, so that's what it'll look like little cupola on top. <clears throat> Any other questions? We'll give you a chance to come back. Anyone else here to speak for or against? Miss Vivian, what do you think? You think we're denied so the county would change the code more easier to deal with? That they don't have a hardship? What do you think, Mac? Mac, quite tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I, I would like to say, and I'll let Vivian is you will notice that this regional beach access uses a portion of the existing public right-of-way uh, that's out in front of where they're asking the variance for the structure. Um, half of this parking lot is already in the public right-of-way, so it looks a little bit different than what you might normally see um, because this is a public facility, they're allowed to use that portion of the right-of-way. Um, and because of the extent of this project, and the very narrow amount of beach that we've got to work with and the constraints of the DEP and wanting us to push everything as far landward as possible, uh, we feel like this would be a reasonable request. And we would appreciate it if you would consider it such. Work it up. Thank you. I'm not so sure we can take that because isn't there a conflict here? No, nah, that's me, right? Yes, we're all here for the public's interest. That's right. Any other questions? Does staff want to introduce? Yes, we could introduce the staff report into the record. Thank you. So, wait a minute. Josh, do you have anything to add real quick? The, the only thing I would like to add, we did receive a letter of support from a property owner in a Moffee Coast supporting the structure and the uh, design that we have uh, conceptualized here. Do they know about the huge palm trees you're gonna plant to block their view? The, the huge palm trees? No, they, they've only seen the conceptual plan. We really haven't gotten into the landscaping uh, component of that. Make sure they're huge. Yeah. Big balls. Sure. Thank you, John. <laughs> Motion Thank you. close the public discussion. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Motion. 
Motion to approve. Motion to approve as presented. Second. Second. Ah, uh, you messed up, Mr. Henderson spoke. Thank you. We have a motion and a second discussion. I think it actually falls under the same criteria as the San Roy Road variance. You have the coastal construction control line, you have the coastal protection zone, you have a front setback. <coughs> They're asking for relief of the same exact thing you're granted with it. I don't see any vertical structures within the uh, setback or right of way, so um, it's not something we haven't approved in the past. I agree. And I think that public beach access points are in high demand and it's such a hot button issue with everybody right now that this is something that we desperately need to take some pressure off of the community and I, I think it's the right thing to do. We have a motion, we have a second, all in favor aye. 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 Nay. We got your parents. We need something from TDC. We will we 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 email you. <laughs> no. <laughs> Item number five. Blue Vista Building. Who's here on for Blue Vista Building? Do I need to go first? Yes, sir. I've been on Twitter all day, guys. You've been in the Twitter? The boots are in the Jeep and the flip flops are on, so I apologize for my attire. Hey, not a problem. You're working, man. We'd like to see that. We Thank don't you. see many of you in here. Thank you, sir. So we are re, uh, respectfully requesting a variance to basically comply with the Design Review Board's uh, covenants for a platted subdivision of the villages of White Cliffs. I'm sorry, what's your name, sir? John Carter. All right, this is the village of White Cliff. This is... Uh, do you know exactly what you're doing? What lot is it? It's uh, lot seven, block D. Do you have anything else to say? Is this the same variance that we've been giving everybody yes. else? Can we just make a motion to approve it? We're gonna, let Vivian, right? Yeah. Come up, come up real quick, please. <coughs> this is the same one we've been dealing with that, uh, the, Village of White Cliff has their setbacks. It was a mileage for so many years, and then Mark Davis' interpretation was that he had to harass them so they have to come to force and kind of get 450, right? Exactly. Okay. Yes. Do you want to do a blanket? We can do, leave the dino. Well, I've been asking to do a blanket for the neighborhood, but the neighborhood would have to request it. The neighborhood has to request it. They have to request it. I think they, they have multiple condominiums um, around them that would make the mail outs very costly. I don't know that they want to push that on all their um, homeowners. They're, I don't know that there are very many lots. So left. would every homeowner have to? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. They have to individually because if I was going to build in there again, I was going to uh, approach the, uh, the committee there and ask them if I could do it as a whole because I would like to build several more homes and I'm going to have to do this over and over and over again. They, the suggestion has been made to them. So. Let's, let's, let's go ahead. Can I ask a question? Sure. I mean, I'm, I'm new and I haven't listened to the other variances, but I do have a question. Yes, sir. You're asking for a variance to revert back to what the original subdivision was, or you're asking for a variance that's even more than that was? No, I'm asking to comply. I'm, a, I'm requesting a variance with the county to comply with their covenants that their design review board has already set forth in 1993. And all of the other homes that are in there are built to those uh, setbacks, the allowable setbacks. And we're requesting to just do the same thing that everyone else that, is doing. That, well, that's my question. You're wanting to do the same setbacks. Correct. That that was when it was platted, when it was set forth then in the documents. Right. I, You're not asking for more than that. No, in fact, we are inches to the good from what they even have 
So they have a one foot side setback for outbuildings, for instance, and uh, that outbuilding is mainly garages or carriage houses or something of that nature. And ours is one foot, two or three inches. So we are not requesting anything more than what is is put forth in their covenants now. Okay. Yeah. Page number four, page number five, and page number six is from the original plat. And I read that, and the, the one note in there for outbuilding says refer to note 1.9, and 1.9 is not in here. No. Okay? So. <laughs> and it's a four. It's I a, did, but, you know. So I would say 80% of the homes have been built in there to that, to that setback standard. That's a good we, point. We never dealt with well, I found the same thing as well. And <laughs> so I, I wanted to know what 1.9 1. 9 meant. And, okay. Why isn't it in there, Vivian? We're supposed to have a complete package. Why are we being misled by, by the county? <laughs> I don't think it was the county trying to mislead. <laughs> um, that page, I don't know why that page isn't there. So I think I copy copied it page? from another. The applicant would, would typically supply that. Do so you want I a copy of that page? I, I, I was just curious. You know, I mean, I didn't know, but it was, ref it says outbuildings, the setback, the side setback, it says see paragraph 1.9. Well, your paragraph stop at 1.7. Hmm. Yeah. I think typically the, the applicant would be supplying that. I've, I've been kind oh, of I, helping I, them I'm along and, I'm just and doing a, a copy from one to the next report and, and supplying it in there for them. And I probably just didn't catch that page when I originally made the PDF of that. Any other questions? Well, Mr. Chairman, if, and I noticed the same thing, and I went to the public records and pulled the actual page. If you'd like to enter the public record, we can, but it does stipulate a one foot setback. And one does, foot, okay. Yeah, and, a four, <laughs> uh, and the alternate being four foot on the side, such that, in my opinion, the site plan does comply. Okay. And just for your information, it, what happened was in 2014, our previous director, Wayne Dice, had made a determination that the county did not um, recognize any covenants and restrictions that were not um, part of a, an approved development order. And so therefore, there were quite a few subdivisions that fell into this category of, um, of being <coughs> established prior to 1996 and not having the benefit of um, a development order that spelled out what their um, setbacks and so forth would be. So, but if, okay. so therefore, the, they, they would have to come. Some, there have been a couple but of- But it's also, it, it's, it's the interpretation of previous director <coughs> Wayne Dice, but all the other directors interpret it different. Interpretation of Mark Davis is a different than other attorneys. I mean, it's all interpretation is the reason we continue to have to do this. I would like to see Mr. Carpenter interpret it, and he has the authority to do so, that we don't have to continue doing this, because in reference, everybody that built prior to 19, I mean, 2014, didn't have to. And if they didn't get a variance, then they're in violation. So, Here's you how I can to respond to that. Yeah, I want you to. Um, I was part of the grand jury hearings and investigation and the grand jury proceeding. Um, I went through the Auditor General investigation uh, a few years ago also, and I'm still here, and I'm going to still be here. But one thing that became very clear throughout all of that is if we don't have a clear paper trail to approve something that's outside of what the Land Development Code says, then we have no authority to approve it. But was this built prior to 1996? It was built prior to 1996, and there is no clear indication that the county approved setbacks beyond what were the standard county setbacks at the time. And there's, the, there's, there's no grandfather of the subdivisions that was built prior to that? Is it some of those subdivisions that is accepted prior to 1996? Yes, and this, this clearly is recorded in public records, so it's an approved subdivision. It's just the plat does not dimension setbacks. 
The plat right. does not dimension setbacks. The they only appear in the covenants and restrictions. And the Land Development Code is very clear. We have no authority to enforce covenants and restrictions that we are not a party to. That is a contract between two private parties or two or more private parties. Uh, and I we just don't your, have the authority I to accept, act on that. I accept your explanation. Now, Thank we do have that. a couple of subdivisions that um, I think Creeb West and Creeb East, that the actual dedication on the plat mm -hmm. directs you straight to the covenants and restrictions as recorded um, for those particular setbacks. And in that particular case, because the BCC approved plat specifically says look there, we can look there. This there is not one of those. There was conversation that this was too expensive to advertise. Is, I mean, no, I'm, not, I'm not putting words into the homeowners association's um, mouths. I mean, there was, there's been conversation um, that I think they were approached by some of the um, ones who were wanting to build in there and they just never moved forward with it is my thoughts. Is that that, that there it, the reason being is because of the substantial amount of, of condos um, surrounding them and potential expense but I'm not going to say that that's their that is their reason the, the other reason could be it's somewhat difficult sometimes to get a group formed as an owners association to come to a, an agreement on a topic <laughs> of any kind okay <coughs> Thank we you for your explanation. Uh, we would certainly entertain a blanket request uh, authorized by the Home Owner Association. If this applicant wants to bring that forward on his next lot and <coughs> include the entire subdivision uh, with the agent authorization from the Home Owners Association, we would absolutely entertain that. Because we have done that. Um, yeah, the, the issue is since you've got multiple owners, each owner has to do it or they have to agree to have an agent handle it. The HOA would be the only one that would have the authority to, to do it. So to speak um, for everyone. Right. So the issue would be unless you own all the lots that are, haven't been developed, you don't have authority to, to go bind those owners. Next time we just approve it without discussion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have anything else to add? No, sir. Okay, dope. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Motion to close it. Public discussion. Motion to close public discussion. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Motion to approve. Motion to approve as presented. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Nay. Aye. Everyone, you got your bearings. <coughs> Next time we try to make it quicker for you. We uh, just uh, <laughs> Are you barefooted? He <laughs> 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 said he left his boots. I thought he might be there for them. Item number six. We got one person left here tonight. Is that you? I think so. I guess you better come up. Appreciate you guys seeing me tonight. State your name for the record. Alan Parker with Paradise Coastal Builders representing our poll. What you asking for? What you want? Well, uh, I'm building a house in Grace Point. It's a new subdivision. And as the documents you probably got, uh, I have a front stoop. And the front stoop, when the architect designed it, the two steps that are off of the stoop uh, worked on the plan, but the topography, as noted in some of the backup letters I've got, They're drops good. drops too fast, and it actually is going to require another 10 inches for a third step for it to work on the topography <coughs> this is on a front street of Grace Point. It's, Grace Point is a one street subdivision with a couple of side streets turning off. It's, a, it's a, about a 30 lot community. And this house faces the street as you come in. And what I'm asking for is a larger stoop. Uh, the county has allowed three foot of stoop into the setback. I'm asking for four and a half feet for the actual flat part of the stoop. Uh, we have some architect drawings of the new stoop, uh, which the, the approved <coughs> plan 
that we got approved shows the stoop with stairs coming directly to the road. What we have thought would be more aesthetic and more workable for the homeowner is that the stairs no longer come toward the street. We just want to put a larger platform there and the stairs will now go left and right. We'll keep it back. So by my overall structure that has been now approved on the plan comes to five foot one inch. What I'm proposing will cut it back seven inches from the overall structure. So I'll be going back into the setback, not out. But I'm asking for a part of that structure that is now only approved for three foot to be approved for four and a half feet for a larger stoop for somebody to uh, walk up on and uh, have enough room to maneuver. And the stairs going left to right with the front design that we've got on the handrail makes it a more uh, aesthetic, functional stoop for the homeowner and for the subdivision. I think we've got letters that approve everybody's in, uh, in, the, in the area for the architects involved for the subdivision as well as my architect and the, arch the owner of the subdivision and the one homeowner that's in there now has all approved it or at least doesn't object to it, thought it had a better look to it. Uh, we also have a financial concern, which is mine. I have a partner that's not involved in this, sort of a silent partner. And this thing was given to me thinking that the steps would work out, the stoop would work out, and then when I got on the job site, we had a 28-foot crawl space under the house, and the street dropped. I realized the stairs weren't going to look. So I had done a house uh, earlier that had the stairs going left to right, and it gave it a lot cleaner look. So I introduced that to everybody, and they said, that looks great. We'd like to see that. So I needed your cooperation to accommodate the motions inside the structure. But I'm glad that I'm only asking for it to go back in rather than going out uh, for the overall structure. That's pretty much uh, So your problem uh, is your architect. The architect messed me up and <laughs> got me in a situation. You, and you, think, sec you second, think they're too educated? The second part of that problem is that I was on a, a road trip and the girl called me from the architects and I don't put blame because I love architects. They do a great job and they've kept me afloat well, working here. With, but with my little imagination and the great architects that I've chosen over my 48 year career, I've excelled because of good architects. But everybody's kept possible of making an error and I think what this young lady did was when she approved, the, she got her lines messed up. Her, for her setback lines and she designed the box of the house that the stoop would never work the way she designed it because the setbacks she was wrong so whenever I was on the road the plan was at the planning department last stage after going through all the other apparatus she said Alan I have an overhang that's only allowed 18 and we have it three foot I'm thinking it's a side or rear I'm not thinking front stoop and so the three foot canopy that actually keeps the water off the people, had been reduced 18 inches. And when I saw it built, I said, I stood under the area and I said, well, let's just find enough water to drown somebody if it's raining. So I was hoping that along with the fluency of the deck, the stoop, that I could get a, a, a three foot variant or an 18 inch variant for the roof to sort of give it a functional use for the homeowner long term, 20 years now they can walk up and won't get wet and the stoop works and it's more functional and more aesthetic for the community. So that's my hardship that I hope you guys look so at. So what are you more. asking for? Uh, the stoop to be approved for, from three foot, which is the county allowance, to four and a half foot. And the side of setback. The there, there is no setbacks required. I'm not asking for anything other than the, the only setback that I'd be infringing on is the three foot stoop going to a four and a half foot stoop and then it, then it stops. We don't have any more stairs going out. The whole unit stops at that point and it's actually seven inches less than what the overall structure is now approved coming out toward the road. And the roof overhang. And the roof overhang would come out three foot, it come out to 18 inch more inches to give it under four and a half foot. I've got six That's inches of rail. Six. So I've only got a four foot stoop from the edge of the rail to the front door. So that gives the people ample enough time to stand there and the canopy would come three foot out, and that would give them enough canopy to get right, the water just, off. Just hang on. <coughs> you asked them for a variance from three foot to four and a half foot stoop. That's the stoop. And you asked them for a 
18 to 36 mm -hmm. inch right. roof. I read, I read the, the stoop. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So only you stoop only. It's, all, it's all only on the stoop. This is only the front door stoop, which is, comes, I think it was like right, now, five please. feet wide. Hey, man, just hang on. You're going from 18 to three feet. Right. I think they have drawings of that to show you the, the elevation. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Vivian, what's your thing? <clears throat> well, this one, it was a little difficult for me to understand until he showed me some pictures and so forth and I could um, get a handle on it a little better. I think that if you read the, uh, the request on the first page of the staff report, it kind of explains a little bit better what you're um, actually going to, would be um, uh, voting on. Uh, there is one mistake on it that I just noticed um, at the very um, last sentence where it says an additional two feet into the setbacks. That should say an additional three feet into the setbacks. But I just want you to be aware of what you're actually would be voting on. And um, that is a, uh, the Grace Point PUD front setbacks are five feet and this would be decre decreasing that to seven inches would be the front setback. So, um, and three feet into the setbacks from the 18 inches allowed for the LDC for the porch canopy to encroach. Explain that, <coughs> explain that five feet, you said five feet is allowed and he's asking for five foot seven inch, right? And he's asking for a seven, due to um, uh, reduction from the well, the, the Grace Point PUD front setbacks of five feet to seven inches. So I just want you to be aware of that's what the In watercolor, is. They, their PUD allows all of their steps to encroach into their front setbacks. Is, is, does, that, does this neighborhood not have the same uh, allowance for porch steps? Is it, if it's I PUD? don't believe so. Or, I mean, I don't have those documents, okay. but um, that that should have been would have been looked at before requesting the variance. Look it up. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Do you have anything else to add? No, sir. Except I hope you got it approved. I've got to be clear with my state. Views on the house, and I need to clear with the agency in this house. So if that price point in that house has an aesthetic value that's appreciated the house over the long term. You want us to table it for a while? Huh? Nah, I'm messing with you. <laughs> Most of public, you public discussion. Well, what, what second? Uh, Mr. Chairman. And the staff report that you read. So in it, yes, please. <coughs> Motion to close the public discussion. Motion to close the public discussion. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Motion to approve one at a time. The first item he asked for, Mr. Burgess, you understand it? I do. It looks like we're looking for, to clarify a reduction from a five foot setback to only seven inches, seven inches, or therefore allowing a four foot five inch encroachment into the setback, but right. reducing it and only over that front stoop. We can also enter that site plan, attach it to the order, Mr. Bikes. That's what the, uh, <coughs> it, that's the pleasure of the board. You want to go ahead and do that? Or do you want to go ahead and tie the other one, Mr. Burgess? I, we may as well um, add in the second one that we would uh, grant a variance for the Eve to encroach three feet into the setback. Three foot six, according to the drawing. Three foot, three foot six inches, three and a half feet. Then, the, and actually, if, if Jeff, if you could help me out a little bit, this you're a little bit better to interpret this than maybe I. Yeah, the, the drawing shows it coming out three foot six. Okay, yeah. I do see that now. Excuse me. So, 
Um, I actually think that that it should come out just as far as the platform below it, but they're not asking for that. Well, I, try, I didn't want to put a lot of hardship on you guys, so I was trying to get by with what I knew. We're before. close. I, I would love <coughs> for it to come on out. It's on Friday, so it's up in there, but that's all up to y'all. I, I, I don't feel favorable. We're close it. We're discussing it. If the board would like to extend it, we can. So if that's what the board pleasure, you. Well, I, I think that the line should, should extend up I from, agree. The, from the platform to the roof. I agree. Yes. So that's your motion? So the yes. motion could be the, the stoop as well as the roof, roof overhang will encroach. Four six. Four six. That's the motion. Not to exceed four foot six inches. Right. That's the motion. Yes, sir. Who's second it? Mr. Second Haggins. That. Yeah. Mr. Haggins second it. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Got your fair. Guys, God bless you. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. You had the opportunity to read the minutes. We have, uh, how many minutes do we have, Darren? Two minutes, which is July and August. August, September. Motion to approve July. Motion to approve July and September. August. July and August. Motion to approve July and August. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Boy, we all eyes tonight. Mr. Chairman, I have one more item if, if, um, if I could. You have one more item. Yes, we had one item, an application that uh, came in right before the hurricane. Um, it was intended to be heard tonight. Uh, it did not get on the ad. Uh, so we're going to act. The notices that the applicant mailed out did get mailed out for tonight's meeting. Uh, so what we would like to ask you to do is to expect to hear Grove at Inlet Beach uh, on November 19th at 5 p.m. at the Cuniac Springs Courthouse. Uh, this is Variance Project 18-000033. And I don't understand. I mean, I don't understand why we mentioned it. Why well, we, mentioned it? we can't hear it tonight because right. we did not meet the print advertising. That's right. It's However, it's a portion of the advertising that went out from the applicant indicated it would be heard tonight. Right. So I think uh, if we could indicate that it will not be heard tonight and it will be heard on November 19th, uh, which will protect the applicant's advertising. Uh, and we had one gentleman. Is he, the, is he the applicant? No, sir. He got one of the notices to appear, to come to the meeting tonight. Uh, so what you need is motion to continue to November 19th. Yes, sir, if we could do that. Motion to continue, what item is that? Uh, this is variance 18-000033. Uh, the name of the project is Grove at Inlet Beach. Then it listed on the agenda. Motion right. to, uh, motion to uh, continue. Motion to continue with variance 18-000033 to the November 19th meeting at the Rock County Courthouse at 5 p.m. Yes, sir. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 So that was me, sir. Is that the gentleman there? Yes. Was that, uh, was that item number seven? Uh, it would have been item number 10, I think. Nine. 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 <coughs> so what that means, sir, is if you wish to appear, it'll be heard next month in the Cuny Springs. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> hey, hey, Matt. That, that uh, the appeal of the one in Grayton Beach, the magnificent red dog Red dog, yes. Does that fall inside the 300 foot coastal dune lake protection zone? I can't remember <coughs> clearly, but I don't think it did. I don't think so. It's just outside of it? Yeah. So they don't have any restriction on their impervious surface ratio? Only if, they, only if they want to avoid having to do stormwater plans. And they're restricted to 40. 
Well, um, they, were, they were trying to max out their buildable envelope with that pool area, and I just it. wondered if it was fruitless for them to appeal it because of that. Yeah, I still got to go through their actual brief on what what points they're appealing, um, but I wasn't surprised that we got it. And, oh, and just so we're clear, on, on the last motion that uh, was passed. Were we going to attach a copy of the yes. the site plan to the order that yeah. was reflect the encroachment? I think there was a, a question about that. So we are attaching that. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Well, Jack, David, what y'all think? <laughs> One shot. thing that I brought up for you earlier popped up and died.